Merry Christmas. If you're celebrating today, I want to bring to you a very special presentation brought to you by myself and my good friend Jenny Mano. We have concocted a mashup of themes and references which we are going to combine to culminate our own individual projects. Mine being the watercolor fairy enchanted castle. Now, Jenny is my friend here on the left, featured with also good friend Lucy Bryden. We talked together in Scotland at our first annual Scottish Castle Art Retreat. And these are the references that we were working with. Now, so two important pieces of information to know. One is about the nature of this collaboration, which is that Jenny and I both have this endless fascination with drawing fairies and enchanted like beings. We both enjoy doing mashups where we take references and we mash them together to create new works of art. And as an extra bonus challenge aspect for this one, we decided we would also include where this enchanted thing is gonna live. So. We left the inhabitation part up to ourselves to pick out the references. We didn't really go into that, but we picked out these two references that we were going to mash together for the character. However, we picked these out six months ago. And since this time, my art room has flooded not one time, but two times thanks to the amazing gastro um, identity mishaps that are my teenage boys. So I lost the other reference. So I only went off of one. And then I'm using this castle reference. Just a little backstory as to what happened. Also something that's very interesting to note is that I haven't seen Jenny's yet as I'm recording this and uploading it onto YouTube. So I won't actually see this until Christmas. So really this is a Christmas present uh, for all of us. And when you get to the end of the video, there'll be a clickable end screen, which you can click and take be taken right to Jenny's video where you get to see her take on this project. So without further ado, let's dive in. So when you're embarking on a grand project like this one, it's there's a lot of decisions to be made. The first decision obviously was like, what is the castle going to look like that this that this amazing f enchanted fairy is going to live in? So then down the Pinterest rabbit hole we go, looking at architectural whimsical castles, and that's you know pretty much two days of my life are spent just doing that. Like it's amazing the artwork that is out there. So I was really happy with the one that I chose. So now I have my references in hand. The next decision to be made with collaborations is, well, mixed media is basically friends with both myself and Jenny. We both are mixed media artists. We both have like all the things at our fingertips. Now I know that she is in a pa pastel frenzy as of late. So my guess is that she's gonna be using pastels in some way. And on the surface, it might appear to my friends and fans and students that I'm in an alcohol marker based frenzy. But in actuality, on the side, um, I've actually been super diving back into my Daniel Smith watercolors that I've taken a really long break from. And so right away, I am thinking watercolors, yes, is going to be um, is going to be the focus of this project. Now, every project I do in real life, I'm actually doing on for the benefit of my students. If there's anything that I can create that can teach something, anything while I'm creating it, I will format it into a lesson. And the only reason I'm bringing that up is because you might be wondering, Karen, we can't follow along with this project because it's all time lapsed and quick. And the answer is yes, I know, because the real lesson is like three hours long <laughs> and you cannot post three hour long videos on YouTube because frankly, nobody watches them. So if you really do want like hands on instruction and you're into all the things that I'm teaching, head over to awesomeartschool.com. I have wait lists for my drawing club and my mixed media club, um, as well as individual real-time classes over there. But 
this is super fun for YouTube because I think it's really, it is helpful and educational to see someone's overall process, to learn about the decisions that artists make and have to kind of contend with when they're coming up with these crazy projects, right? And if you know me, I do three projects a week because I do one for my students at Awesome Art School. And then I'm also posting both on my, I have a YouTube drawing channel as well as this mixed media one. So this is a great exercise for me is always great new fun ways to come up with ideas. And the ideas of the mashup and collaborating with other friends and artists is a great way to like pump up your creativity. Um, and yeah, I mean, there, there's a lot of things going on that come that have to come together behind the scenes that make these projects uh, a reality. So um, what's cool about understanding and deciding on the medium that you're going to be working with is then that informs uh, everything else. So then, okay, then you need to pick the right paper. So if you're doing watercolor or anything with water, you have to be working on watercolor paper or a canvas if you're working with acrylics. So I dug out this ginormous pad of watercolor paper. It's like 15 by 22 inches. Now, if you're new to my channel or if you're not familiar with me, you'll know that I like cannot create smallly in a small way. I, I am a big, hot mess of an artist and I need a big surface to get creative on. But the behind the scenes real reason that I need to create huge and to give you an idea of just how cute, huge I like to create that mashup I was referring to earlier in the video, that was another one that Jenny and I had done together. And my project ended up being eight feet of mermaid. Okay, guys, I'm not exaggerating when I say that I work huge. Okay, Jenny's was on like an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. Like I have a problem, but actually my real problem is that I really struggle with details. I struggle with recognizing them. I struggle with creating them. I struggle with... Um, uh, like the fussiness of them and the details. I, I'm just like a, I'm just like a bull in a china shop and I like to work fast and I'm in a rush. <laughs> That's just my style. So it's a real struggle and a, it's a genuine challenge for me to have to go in here and like dial in on those details. And another reason that it's also stressful, which this is again, kind of like fun behind the scenes stuff is that Jenny is an amazing artist, okay? She's not just a friend and we're doing this for fun. She is amazing. She is a million times better than me. <laughs> so I have to bring my A game when we do collabs and stuff because it's not a competition, but I just feel like I, I can't let, I can't let anybody down. Like, but also like I can't let myself down because she is so freaking good. So Again, I encourage you to please go check out her YouTube channel. She does tutorials every Tuesday and they are awesome. So um, while I'm suffering through these details um, and thinking of my insecurities and all the things I'm not good at compared to Jenny, the only strength I am relying on, thank goodness I have one, is this, which is I actually have a background in architecture. So I actually went to graduate school for architecture and interior design. So I actually know for reals how to do facades and like elevations of buildings because um, I used to do this for my job so while this is like a fun lighthearted version of that I felt good doing like the roofing tiles and the siding and indicating the stones and things so trust me when I tell you I'm like holding on to every little power and trick that I have because I need them to compete with my dear dear sincerely seriously talented friend Jenny and those of you who are my biggest supporters are probably thinking, but Karen, you're super good at drawing faces. And then I'm going to come right back to you and be like, yeah, but have you seen Jenny's? <laughs> she's the queen of characters. She's, I'm telling you guys, she's the bomb. So this is a lot of pressure for me. So it's um, a part of the lesson, the real time lesson portion of this um, of this project and something I was trying to convey to my Fun Fab Drawing Club students is that I don't do a lot of painting in there because I don't expect anyone, like people are there to learn to draw. So I don't go into a ton of mediums in my drawing club. I do that all in my mixed media society. So I wanted a way to introduce 
the art of coloring with watercolors in a really non-threatening, just kind of like friendly way. And because I think watercolor, especially to someone who just does drawing, is like super intimidating. And like you hear all the, all the time professional artists are like, watercolor is the most intimidating and unforgiving of all mediums. And I'm like, God, it is not. That is like a ball face lie. It's really, truly not. So it was really, this was a super cool opportunity to give my advanced drawers something that they could really sink in their teeth into, right? Like, oh my gosh, like this whole castle and then her face. And then we do, you know, we do some nice shading. But so the drawing part of it is super advanced. But then the watercolor portion of this is actually super, super baby easy beginner. It's awesome. It's the best of both worlds. So one of my favorite techniques um, with when I'm introducing watercolor to my drawers is that we will use it just kind of as like a wash to add like a little flavor on something. You don't have to always get crazy with your art supplies. There's no rules in art saying that you have to like, everything has to be complicated, right? Like I'm a firm believer and maybe this is all just because I'm self taught, but like I'm really most interested in like the quickest, fastest, easiest, best way to do things. Like Every, for everything. So um, there, watercolors, there's no reason why we can't have that same approach. So that is my approach to teaching it to these super advanced drawers who are ready to take their drawings to the next level and maybe start dabbling in other mediums. So love, love, love this project for that. So when we're talking about doing the shading for her face, like her face, it's just one wash of, I forget the color, Naples yellow, I think, or yellow ochre. I can't remember. It's all the supplies are in the description box for you if you're interested in the Daniel Smith watercolors that I'm using. It's literally one coat of that to get started. And then we go back a second time and we just do it a tiny bit more to get the shading, like the littlest bit for her hair. Her hair is one color. And then we dry it. And then again, we go back just one more time just to make some strands darker. That is it. When we're doing the cloud cover mystical stuff in the sky, it is one color. We are literally blobbing it onto the paper with a ton of water. That is it. That is all we are doing. When we're going to the castle, we're taking a little bit of really cool colors that I can't pronounce any of them or, or spell them for that matter, and we're just dabbing it to the corners. We are not blending. We are not doing wet on wet. We are literally taking a wet paintbrush and we are putting it onto our papers, and that's it. If we put too much on, you can just pick some up with a tissue. It's literally as simple as that. So I love, love, love teaching watercolor to drawers as just a very basic and very fast and actually very easy way to pack a punch to some otherwise just very beautiful, but you know, black and white or shaded gray drawings. It's so, so, so super fun. So if there's anything I can like motivate you or inspire you to try is trying this with your own drawings. Now this could, should probably be on my drawing channel, um, but I already have a whole content series going over there teaching how to draw whimsical women from all over the world. And if you want to check that out, please come and join in the fun. It's awesome. Karen Campbell Draws is the name of my drawing channel. Um, but yeah, but watercolor does not have to be fancy, you guys. And it and it's, can be beautiful even with the most minimalist application. So I do highly recommend giving watercolor a try if you ever want to. I just want to encourage you that it is nothing to be scared of. It's a whole heck of a lot of fun. Um, and you can't really go wrong if you're just using like a little light wash over your graphite drawings. It's, it's a pretty safe way to play and experiment. So I just don't want you to be afraid. And I hopefully, even though this seems like a big fancy schmancy project, which it is, the actual watercolor application part of it, it really is not at all. So when you are working in watercolors um, as a mixed media artist, you do have a lot of options for things that you can layer on top. I know us mixed media artists are all getting fancy and mixing and mashing our supplies all up. Um, but if you notice here, oh, I should just also mention that like um, colored pencils, pastels, 
and um, inks and other markers are great things to layer on top of them and layer on top of them safely as well as other water soluble materials like art crayons and um, water soluble colored you know watercolor pencils and markers all of those things you can layer on top of watercolors safely just remember that anything that's liquidy will reactivate most of your watercolors but as long as everything is water soluble together you can layer it safely um, and even permanent materials like ink and color pencils and pastels you can put on top safely as well. So there are some rules that you need to kind of keep in mind. But if you notice for this project, I'm only just going back in with my graphite. That's it. And I'm just doing additional shading. Again, I'm doing this for the benefit of my drawing members, just keeping things really nice and easy. And there's absolutely no reason you can't do an entire masterpiece with just some very few supplies instead of having all the things. So I hope this project inspires you to go out and collaborate with one of your best artsy friends. I hope you have an amazing, amazing Christmas and click this link right here to go watch Jenny's. I'm going right now. Oh!